Can you buy a fun sports car for £1,500? Well, we tried, and to see who chose the best car, we drove 700 miles, tested them for faults, took them on track, and even got a bit stuck. <laughs> Idiot. We decided on a maximum budget of £1,500 for each car, and anything left over could be spent on upgrades along the way. I hate to sound smug, but I've definitely picked the quickest car. So let's see what we bought. Yes. Audi TT, and I got the good engine. 1.8 turbo, 225 horsepower. It's got oily bits on my car. Come on, it's a lot of car for £1,500. <laughs> What? <laughs> Sorry, something just caught my eye. No, don't, no, it's fine. Don't look in here. Where you want to be looking is under there. At the 3.2 litre V6 that I have. Horsepower. 218. 225. More isn't always more. This was £1,495. No, mine was one four. 90. Okay, so you beat me by a fiver. Just in under budget. There is absolutely no way that's keeping up with this. Oh, have, you, you, have you seen the colour? <laughs> it's the fastest colour. Scott told me he got something British. Yeah, he said it was rear wheel drive. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's missed this challenge's purpose. What has he brought? Why? <laughs> Hello, boys. You've brought a crusty Jag. What I've bought is a speed machine. Four litres, 290 brake horsepower. You just went on auto trading and went V8 and bought the only one. <laughs> that is exactly what I did, actually. <laughs> but we're also driving up to Scotland, seven hour trip. So I'm going to be the most comfortable of all of us. 1,300 quid. So I'm 200 quid under budget. I didn't even look under the bonnet when I bought it. Let's have a look. Oh, that's oh. cool. Oh, look at that. It's magnificent. That's fire damage from where the oil comes out. Hmm, that's weird. Jaguar with some reliability issues. So you've gone for the, you've gone for a TT? Yeah, that's a, that's a boring choice. Right, shall we go to Knock Hill? Go to Knock Hill. To Scotland! Eight hours and 59 minutes remaining. Now you've seen the cars, let's look at where we're going. We'll start at the office in Leamington Spa, fill up with fuel along the way, and then make our way to a retail park just outside Manchester to buy our mods. From there, we'll head up to the stunning Lake District, stop for lunch, and then make the final stretch up to Knock Hill, 374 miles in total. We were less than half an hour into our trip, and things were going well. Hmm, this is a wobbly car. My car is already a bit hot. <laughs> 110 degrees Celsius already. Is that the water or the oil? Water. Uh, oil. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want to make sure, mate, do you know what... Do you know what temperature water, water boils at? Yes, when it's not under pressure. Nerd. My temperature's fine. Now this road trip has been sponsored by Carly and that's useful because they make a universal OBD scanner that allows you to check fault codes on your car and a load of other stuff. Even unlock hidden features and also do things like live data. Now my TT is running quite hot, but Carly would allow me to pull up on my phone and see how hot my oil is, how hot my coolant is, how hot my intake air temperatures are, and find out more about my car so I can diagnose problems without going to a garage. Now you can do all of that on older cars like this, even Scott's Jag. But if you have a newer car like Will's M5, you can do a whole load more. You can customize lights, you can disable auto start stop if that's not your thing. You can also code a new battery. So make sure to check out Carly with the link in the description. Make sure to support the brands that support us to buy silly cars and do this. Bollocks. I forgot my sing sunglasses. Because the big Jag was already out of fuel, we stopped at a service station to fill up. But Scott was having some trouble with his alarm. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey. He's still going. Oh no! Yes! <laughs> there you go. Not too bad. Huh? I don't think I can fit much more than that. I can see the fuel. I've just brimmed my tank and my fuel light has come on. Saying I have no fuel. Not my problem, mate. Good luck. With a serious dent in the fuel budget and a small crash. He's hit my car. <laughs> I'd like a word with your insurer, please. We finally hit the road. I don't feel I sufficiently roasted the other two. This is the only car here that's actually a sports car and that has a manual gearbox. 
It's also the only one that, act, that has stiff suspension. The only one that's a bit low. It's the only one that has good tires. It's the only one that has a turbo. I have the perfect car. Now I know the Jag isn't technically a sports car, but four liters, rear wheel drive, front engines, and I'm gonna be quicker on the track than those two anyway. So I might as well travel up to Knock Hill in complete comfort. So you're probably wondering why I bought an SLK. Um... My car was the least powerful and the most expensive, so I was desperate to claw something back. I think this is the perfect balance between Callum's rock hard TT and Scott's stupid soft Jaguar. I've got an automatic gearbox. Yes, that's not very sporty, but for a long journey like this, nice creamy smooth V6, only leaks a little bit of oil, and you know, it's relatively quick. Ish. Going for the overtake. Mine has 221 horsepower. It weighs just under 1,500 kilos, so that means it has the best power to weight of all of us. Somehow mine weighs a little bit less than yours. I don't really know how with my roof and my automatic gearbox and my V6, but it's just over 1,400 kilos. Uh, Scott, what about yours? Uh, about what? How much does your car weigh? 1,700 kilos. Look, it might be a little bit heavy, but it doesn't matter when you've got almost 300 brake horsepower. Once the world's worst top trumps game was over, we moved on to something Callum definitely didn't tell us about his TT. Uh, Callum, I had a quick check of the MOT history on your TT, and um, the last MOT has got a few advisories on it. They're all very minor. When you say minor, all I can see is structural body structure is corroded, Offside integral body structure is corroded. Near side front suspension arm corroded. <laughs> it takes up the entire page. Right, to get this engine in this car for 1,500 pounds, I had to make some sacrifices and uh, structural integrity was one of them. Furious about our discovery, Callum challenged us to a road legal drag race. Pull alongside me and we're gonna have a race from 60 to 70. Three, two, one, go. Come on! <laughs> no! That's a win. It, it wasn't too bad. I'm quite happy with that. Right, Will, come and come and face the, the winner. Three, two, one, go. Oh! <laughs> oh, that was so close! Part of our challenge was that we could spend any remaining budget on modifications along the way. That leaves Will with five pounds, Callum with 10 pounds, and me with 200 pounds. So we parked up and went off in search of ways to shave seconds off a lap time. Right, I'm gonna try and get another one of these. Ooh, I could get one of these for some more noise. Oh, 10 pounds, sorry. Spot on, first one I pulled out. It's exactly 10 pounds. Look at that. <laughs> It's got to be that, hasn't it? I've gone for some uh, style stripes because that makes everything faster. My, my budget was small, so uh, there were bigger ones, but I've had to go for a small one. <laughs> we headed to the car park to fit our new purchases and waited for Scott to arrive. In there. Lovely. Go! <laughs> How am I going to do this? How does this work? How can something so simple be so difficult? That looks like the middle. Oh, that is satisfying. Hello, look like the middle? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Could you not have used this bit there? Yeah, but that would, we don't have time for that. Is it, it's straight, right? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't quite lined up the roof. He could have bought some new tyres and all sorts. 200 pounds, he could have bought another car. And he's a racing driver, he knows you know, what he should yeah. do to make a car go on track. We'll see what he turns up with. Finally, Scott appeared. And once again, he'd missed the memo about performance. He's got a basket. Yeah, I don't see any tyres in there. I'm not seeing any tyres or an alignment. Can you get an alignment in a basket? Hello, boys. I bought a Jaguar owner's starter kit, basically. So some brogues, a blazer. <laughs> you know, I'm just settling into owning a, a Jaguar. Perfect track day attire, a flat hat. Just imagine being in a Ferrari and then Scott comes past you with a blazer on. Elbow on the window. <laughs> I'm not the complete, the complete <laughs> package now. <laughs> oh, right, onwards. Oh, it's hot in here already and we've just set off. The car in the car park had just been becoming an oven. This car 
is not fun on the motorway. My back hurts, I've got a thumping headache, I'm too hot, I can't open the window because then my headache gets worse because it's so loud in here. I would rather be in that Jag right now and it pains me to say that. Will, whose mum did you buy that from? Yours. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, if you knew her, you wouldn't say that. She's gonna come straight after you. <laughs> this isn't an old woman's car. This is a man's car, it's a sports car. That's not a sports car, Will. Come on. It's got two doors, it's got two seats, it's got a V6 and it's rear wheel drive. That is a sports car. I do kind of pity Callum in that TT, but I'm really pleased I'm not in that at the moment. No aircon, hard suspension, manual gearbox. On these motorway miles, it's not pleasant. But I am actually quite envious of Scott. That drag, is, you can see it, it looks like it's riding on a magic carpet at the moment. Right, we're coming off in one mile. Yes, here come the good roads. That view is incredible. The roads are getting good and I've got a beetle in my way. I've got a beetle in my way as well. Look, Google said these roads were good. I'm sorry that there's people here too. We stopped for lunch just near Lake Windermere and Callum had a challenge lined up. So, because this video is sponsored by Carly, I thought of a challenge. Whoever gets the most fault codes loses. Well, I mean, that's probably going to be you. Me? How many likes have you got on the dash right now? Uh, two. <laughs> I've got none. I've also got none. Did they have sensors for corrosion? Fault code, structurally buggered. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to know if there was something critically wrong. Sometimes it's better to not know. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that could influence how we drive on these next few roads, because more fault codes it could be driving very carefully. We're connecting. We're scanning. Oh, I'm acceptable. OK, right. Three issues. Only three issues. All with the engine. Engine speed sensor missing tooth. Not too bad. Cylinder six, fuel injection, circuit short to ground. That's fine. And uh, another speed sensor tooth missing. That's good. Only three. Beat that, boys. That's very cool, isn't it? That's very cool. Don't let me down, that's OK. Zero issues found. 12%, zero issues found. 56%. Zero issues found. 100% zero issues. No! He's done it! Oh God. 7% an issue found already. 15% <laughs> two issues found. Oh, it's not looking good. Oh no. 92% four issues found. Yes! <laughs> so my overall car health is very bad. For, uh, ABS brakes, two issues. Control module for all wheel drive. Also a fault with that. So probably it's not four-wheel drive now, it's two-wheel drive. Air conditioning, fuel level sensor has failed. That explains my fuel thing. Fair play to the Merc. Yes. Zero issues. Okay, let's continue. Good luck, Alan. With that challenge comfortably in the bag for the SLK, I thought I'd experience some roof down motoring to celebrate. Will, oh, you well. stripe! You forgot <laughs> about the stripe! <laughs> <laughs> Driving roads, let's go. Yes! These roads are off, boys. Wind in my hair. My SLK is perfect for these roads. Not going to admit this to the other guys, but I will admit to you, the Jag is a little bit soft. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, we just took off in the Jag. I have to say, gents, it's absolutely beautiful here. Right, so we're turning away from the lake, going up into the mountain. The roads are good, aren't they? That last section was sick. Good warm up for the track. Get out of the way! <laughs> Callum's Audi is really influencing him. If you had anything about you, you would have overtaken him by now. I've tried, there's no straight bits. Tunnel. <laughs> After what felt like an age on the road, we finally crossed the border into Scotland. Scotland! Gonna be your first track day abroad. My first track day. <laughs> Just an hour out from Knock Hill and we needed to stop to get some fuel. We didn't record this, but somehow Will managed to get lost on the way into the services. What has he done? <laughs> you idiot. We beached it. Watch out for the lorry. Whee. After my little mishap, Callum came up with another challenge. We brimmed these last time. Yep. I reckon he's drunk a lot more fuel than we have. I can guarantee it. We brim them again, and then we'll see who drunk the most fuel. Don't want to see. I have it. 
Who do we think has done the, the worst? You. Okay, let me go first then. 285 miles. 46.42 litres. 40.94. Oh no! 39. What? 39. 32 miles to the gallon. 31.6 mpg. That's not bad. Also, I've just realised a thing. You've just loaded your car up with 60 kilos of fuel. <laughs> <laughs> before a track day. Yeah. Tanks brimmed and my car deemed the most economical. We checked our tyre pressures and made the final drive up to Knock Hill. Knock Hill, here we come. You know what, Will? I still get nervous when I go to racetracks. I've just come down there and the last time that I came to this circuit, I was a kid and uh, watching my dad race. Recognise where I was and I get butterflies in my stomach, which is absolutely mad because I'm going on track in a Jaguar. I should be nervous, but for different reasons. So we're probably like 10 minutes out from uh, Knock Hill now. Uh, a little bit nervous. It's actually my first track day. Probably the SLK's first track day. Probably any SLK's first track day. Given that I bought this two days ago for 1,500 pounds, 325 miles now, and it hasn't skipped a beat, but the track's gonna be a massive test, so. Oh, we made it. We're here. Knock Hill, what? This looks incredible. Almost 400 miles later, and we'd finally arrived at Knock Hill Circuit. But I had one final challenge lined up. It's quite simple. Four laps, most overtakes wins. A point gained for every overtake, and a point lost for every time we are overtaken. A proper test to see who brought the quickest car. I was feeling somewhat calm about the track day, but when we pulled in, it was obvious how far off the pace we would be. I was struggling to find a single car I'd be able to overtake. Almost everything had arrived on the back of a trailer. Slick tires, Perspex windows, proper suspension. All things none of us had. I thought maybe, Everyone would have slower cars than this. Right, you go and see what we have to do. We headed into the driver's briefing and Will was definitely feeling the nerves. Everybody that's got a red wristband, I'm going to be a gold sticker. Just remember that we're in road cars and I've been in the wall on a track day in a road car before, in a Ferrari. I wasn't driving, I was coaching. And you move a lot in the car, more than you probably expect. <laughs> How are you boys feeling? I'll admit it, I've slight code brown going on right now. Before we sent it around the Knock Hill track, we thought it might be sensible to do a few sighting laps behind Scott in the Jag. Hello, mate. I'm just gonna say, put on a good show because I really want to see this going around. <laughs> Thank you. Whoa, the elevation is mental. So if there's not much talking right now, I'm currently in my pants while actually having quite a good time. This little SLK's all right! Ha, that was so much fun! Oh my God. <laughs> Ridiculous. So much traffic out there, and obviously we're quite slow in comparison. Uh, the guys did great. I mean, to be fair, it's quite intimidating when there's so many cars out there for, for, for them, you know? I feel like I'm gonna be able to go quicker than some of the stuff out there. <laughs> After just a couple of laps, it was clear that our cheap cars stuck out like a sore thumb, especially Scott's Jag. I was scared, and then I just grew with confidence as, as I got around the track. I was like, I'll take anyone. <laughs> it was hilarious, like, seeing these three with the cars, like, atoms coming past and caterums and stuff. You know what? It doesn't matter what you come to a day like this in. Doesn't matter how fast it is, how silly it is, you are going to have fun because having fun is about driving a car towards its limit and not about how quick you are. If you can drive a car on the limit, you will have a load of fun in it. There's an atom. <laughs> oh, he's gone wide. Oh, now <laughs> these curbs. Oh, <laughs> uh, it is quite heavy. Scott in that Jag just proves it's the driver, not the car. He was overtaking track prepared minis and even keeping up with atoms at some points. Oh, he's locked up. It's run deep. <laughs> Come on. I've only had one overtake so far. Good exit to here. Come on, mini, get out of the way. Come on, Jag. Okay, the brakes, the brakes are terrible. Oh. oh. Brakes are fading already. <laughs> Come on, Jag! We're catching him! <laughs> Chuck it in! Oh, yeah! Oh, that's a spongy pedal! Oh! Got him again! He was intimidated 
by the Silk 320. That was like one of those sick burps. I think that may be nerves and a little bit of excitement. Look at us. Who'd have thought? Oh, such a good track. So much fun. After following Will's SLK for a couple of laps, it was clear he was growing in confidence. <laughs> Will's doing very, going very fast. Got a good line. What a la Whoa! Ho, ho, ho. The Jag almost lost it. Oh, he's going in hot. He's going in hot. Bloody hell, William. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Will, that's fast. That's bold. <laughs> Did not expect him to be that fast. Oh my god, Will, you're scaring me! <laughs> All calendar and deep. Where's he going? I had to pit. Yeah, I've got no brakes. That could be my day over. Oh, I'm going in the pits, lads. Let's ease up. Give the poor thing a little rest. 1300 quid, you can come to Knock Hill and have a bloody great time. That was the most fun I've ever had. Good little car. Now I was really pushing in that TT, but I just couldn't keep up with the SLK. And the Jag, forget about it. Scott was really sending it over those curbs. I overtook a couple of cars, but I got overtaken by four or five, I think. I've, I've lost, which I'm really pissed about because I wanted to at least beat the SLK. How was that, Will? I loved it. <laughs> I need a track car. <laughs> Getting overtaken is a bit boring. Yeah. Just overtaking, like there's a Fiat 500 he came past me, wasn't it? <laughs> now it's time to look over the final scores. So with the price, Will got the most expensive car and Scott got the cheapest one. The drag race, I won. The faults, I lost. The MPG, I won again. But then in the overtakes, Scott was so much quicker. Will in second and me in third. And you're not going to believe us, but it adds up to exactly 10 points each, meaning it's a three-way tie. Honestly, that's true. So there we go. Whether you buy a two-wheel drive TT, a yellow SLK, or a very rusty V8 Jaguar, you're going to have just as much fun for the money. Track day's finished. Probably one of the best days I've ever had. Yeah, it's just good. Very good. I need a track car. If you like this style of video and you want to see more adventures like this, please let us know in the comments and remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.